In producing my laminated disc from my large double dizzy bowl base that I just finished, I ended up with quite a bit of scrap. And when these discs were cut out of these boards, I have quite a bit of wood here, of pieces here that could be used for something else. So what I decided to do is to take two of these, put them back to back, and make up another strip. This is the 11 more pieces of some uh, wood, which I'll glue together and then place in the middle and glue this together like this and then out of this section here I can get at least a six inch diameter laminate disc which I can use to make some small bowls or some other projects. So I made up a bunch of these strips, I made up a total of three and I'll get uh, at least uh, a dozen discs out of this scrap wood. And I can make projects such as some uh, smaller vases, a uh, bud vase, uh, some segmented eggs, and uh, even some bangle bracelets. And then even out of some of these straight sections here, I can make some knife handles. So none of this will go to waste. It'll all get used up for various projects. So in this video, I'm going to be showing uh, doing these up, cutting out the disc, and making some of these additional projects. I'm going to start by gluing up these 11 boards to make one laminate strip by using my glue jig and using epoxy cement once again. And then once these are glued up, then I'll attach them to the uh, other pieces. And once again, I'm using the, the West epoxy system. I cut a total of 11 wood strips for each of the required laminate boards using the AccuSlice system. The wood strips varied in thickness between 25 thousandths and 75 thousandths inch thick and were arranged to provide a contrasting color between each of the laminate wood strips. I next apply an epoxy to both sides of the wood strips using an inexpensive brush to quickly paint on the epoxy. After epoxy was applied to the last wood strip, the glued assembly was inserted into the glue jig system by inserting the wood strips into a wax paper cradle between the two angle irons. Two spring clamps are applied to clamp the wood strips, and then they are pushed down to get each of the wood strips as even as possible. The squeezed out excess epoxy is wiped off, and then additional spring clamps are applied to thoroughly clamp the wood strips and push out additional ex excess epoxy. The glued assembly is allowed to dry overnight. I just finished uh, gluing up three of these strips of 11 strips of wood. Now I need to run these through my planer to remove the excess glue. I have my three laminated boards uh, all glued, all cleaned up, ready to glue into my uh, pieces that I saved from my uh, large Disney Bowl project. And I made one more change here. Uh, these pieces originally had points coming out where I cut my complete circles out. And I cut those off flat. I just ran this lengthwise through my table saw to get those flat, because that gives me a flat area to put my clamps on. So when I clamp this, I can put a a C clamp or a bar clamp across that so I have good clamping pressure. So I have three of these all set up. I should be able to get at least a dozen uh, six inch discs out of each of those. So the next step is to, uh, to glue these together. Again, I should probably use epoxy to glue these together, clamp them, and let them dry overnight. And then uh, we're ready to start uh, cleaning them up and then cutting our disc out. total width for clamping here is about 8 inches, so it's a little bit too big for most of my C clamps, so I'll be using bar clamps instead. So I have my epoxy all mixed up here, and I'm ready to start gluing these and then clamping them. I put some wax paper down here to keep the table clean.
And that was the reason I cut these ends off so the bar clamps could clamp better. It's hard clamping on a pointed surface, but the flat surface is good for clamping. So after blowing these all up, now I got to uh, sand them flat and flush. And uh, it's a little bit too wide to go on my uh, planer, so I'll do up my uh, drum sander. I was able to lay out 14 discs ranging in diameters from a large of 7 inches down to a 2 and a half inches. So it's 14 discs, so now I'll take these to the bandsaw and start cutting them out. When I cut these discs on the bandsaw, I purposely cut just outside my line. I mean, just my line is my perfect circle. So I cut between a, a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch outside my line. Then I use my edge sander to sand it right to that line. So I have a perfect circle when I'm done. This is the results of uh, all those pieces of wood left over from that double dizzy bowl vase. And I glued these all up and I got a total of 21 discs out of all of those scraps. Uh, these are all one particular pattern. These are a slightly different pattern where the alignment of the uh, layers was slightly different. So these will make separate projects. This will probably just make some uh, uh, bangle bracelets and maybe some bracelets here and some small bowls here and maybe one or two bowls or eggs out of this uh, group here. So the next step is to uh, glue these up to some uh, pieces of MDF and uh, then slice off my layers a hundred thousandth of an inch thick and then I can start arranging these into uh, patterns for, for various projects. I have all my laminated discs ready to cut on the AccuSlice. I glue these up to some scrap MDF with some Type Bond 3 glue. And now we're ready to start slicing them on the AccuSlice. Now the other thing I usually do is just make sure that my uh, sacrificial fence is perfectly parallel to the bandsaw blade. It's not important that the table be perpendicular to the bandsaw blade, but this edge of my uh, sacrificial fence is parallel to the blade. That way I'm cutting all my wood and I'll get all the way down to the end. And it would look to be pretty good. Zero out my index wheel. Set it to zero. And now I want to cut off, cut off uh, one rotation for the blade thickness. And another, say, 20 thousandths.
have 20 discs. I just finished slicing my 21 disc on the AccuSlice system and each of those discs produced 10 of these 100,000 inch thick disc. So that was 21 disc times 10 be 210 disc. Uh, in order to cut these, I did need to use a, a fairly coarse uh, blade. I used the uh, Timberwolf 6 teeth per inch blade. And because of that, uh, I have a fair amount of coarseness in the surface of the, uh, the sliced boards. But I had to use a 6 teeth per inch blade because the epoxy, there's so much epoxy in this that epoxy chews up the bandsaw blades and gums them up pretty quickly. Uh, and that's why I had to use a 6 teeth per inch. In fact, one of my customers is actually using a 3 to 4 teeth per inch blade. He likes it better because it, it lasts longer, especially when you're doing something with so much glue and epoxy between all the slices of the board. And then what the other customer is also doing is after he's slicing it that way, he's running it through his uh, belt sander or a board sander to get them all exactly the same thickness and get rid of the roughness from the uh, bandsaw blade. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Uh, my uh, curve of my bandsaw blade is 45 thousandths. And when I was indexing my index wheel on the AccuSlice system, I took a 3 4 revolution, which is 150 thousandths. Minus 45 for the blade gives me 105. In actuality, all these discs are around 105 thousandths of an inch thick. They actually vary between 103 and 107 thousandths just because of the uh, error in dialing in the um, distance on the uh, index wheel. So, what I'm going to do on these, I'm going to be running these through my. Uh, my uh, board sander and maybe, maybe take it down to maybe 103, 102 thousandths on one side, turn it over and take another two thousandths off the other side to get all these down to exactly a hundred thousandths of an inch thick. And that'll get rid of the, um, some of the coarseness, the rough, roughness from the bandsaw blade and it'll look a little bit nicer and have better, uh, better gluing joints. So that's the next step to run these through my board sander to get them all exactly the same thickness. Okay, I set my uh board sander or drum sander here to give me a board thickness of about 103 thousandths of an inch. So I'll run one side of these boards through that, then I'll lower it another two, three thousandths and do the other side. That's perfect, 100,000 of an inch thick, right on the button. I have all my discs ready to start gluing them up, and I made my jigs. My jigs consisting of a, a piece of MDF with four pins to tightly hold the disc to keep them all in alignment so when I'm gluing they don't slip and slide. And on the bottom I put a piece of plastic the size of the disc. This just keeps the disc from sticking to the MDF. And then I'll glue these up in sets of five, Rotating each disc uh, for this project four degrees between the disc. On the uh, the large uh, double du uh, on the large double dizzy bowl base, I rotated the disc two degrees. But these are pretty large discs going up to 12 inches in diameter. These are averaging maybe six inches in diameter. So I'm going to rotate these four degrees. And this is my pattern I'll be using to align the disc to get my angles set. So now I'm ready to start gluing these. I'll glue these up in sets of five disc using type on 2 glue, set gluing up in five sets, and clamping them in place until uh, they dry. This is my pattern with a four degree angle. And I uh, drew this up in uh, the SketchUp software. And I have my center line and then I have two four degree uh, rotations on, marked on this pattern. And what I us usually do is I take one of my discs, and I have these different diameter circles on here just so I can align my disc with what it should be. And I get the center marked into the center, and then note where it meets another color bar on the next disc. And then I add my second disc and note that position. 
And then usually I, I create some index points from that on, my, on the edge of my disk. And that's what I did here. Um, you can actually see this. I put some small marks on here. And those are four degrees, so I'll use those as I glue up the disk as I go forward. So now I know what I'm doing. I'll just I'm ready to start gluing up. I'm applying Type Bond 2 Extend glue to both sides of each of the disk. However, in the future, I'll be using Type Bond 3 glue for this glue up, since Type Bond 3 glue has a faster setup time than the Type Bond 2 Extend glue. After applying the second disc to the glue up system, I line the disc to the black lines previously marked on the edges of the disc, and then apply a spring clamp to lock the position of the two discs. I check the alignment on the opposite side of the disc and apply a second clamp. I next apply a number of additional clamps to clamp the disc assembly together. I allow the glued assembly to set for at least five minutes before I glue on any additional layers. I repeat the process gluing on each additional layer until all five layers have been glued together. Okay, I'll let that set a few minutes and then I'll put it in my press. Okay, I have two presses. This is a press I made a couple years ago. And I was looking to make something uh, that uh, we could advertise or market or describe how to make in one of my YouTube channel videos. And I came across this unit in the, uh, on Amazon, and it's really heavy made. It probably weighs like 30 pounds, all metal, and it's like $113. So it's very, very inexpensive. You couldn't make it for that. Of course, it's made in China, but... Uh, so I'm going to give it a try here. So I put my second plastic on top, and then I may... Uh, little pin stick up a little bit so I put this other spacer on top and I can put it in here. This press is actually made for binding books. And it has some parallels here to keep things straight. And we'll just give it a try. This is the first time I used it, so I'll see how it works. And this is the other press I made several years ago. And again, same thing. I have my jig set up, put my plastic on top. Set it in here, put a block on top, and it down. So let those dry probably about three or four hours. From the 210 laminated disc, sliced from the scraps from my large double dizzy bowl, I was able to produce 42 laminated disc sets, each comprised of five laminated layers. Then as shown in my previous videos, I did cut out center sections out of each of the laminated disc sets, so that in total I was able to produce more than 80 laminated disc sets that range in diameter from 7 inches down to 2 inches. All our laminated disc have been glued up into sets of five disc and rotated the appropriate angle. And I have a total of 18 of these five layer disc. And some of the disc at the bottom actually contains six layers. So I have a total of 96 layers of laminated disc in this bowl. Plus I also have a top and bottom ring which are made some, from some uh, segmented catalogs wood. In this case it's 24 segments in this disc. And it may actually create a, a feature strip in this uh, when I get closer to finishing it. I took each of these discs and after they uh, came out of the, the glue, gluing jig, I did sand the edges lightly to get rid of the excess glue so I can more easily see the edges uh, to accurately align this when I'm doing it on the lathe. For details on the finishing of this Dizzy Bowl project, see my YouTube videos on producing the large Dizzy vase, as well as the other YouTube videos on my other Dizzy Bowl projects.
The following are a series of pictures of the various projects made from the scraps from the large Dizzy Bowl project, as described in this video. These projects included some vases, some bud vases, a large Dizzy egg with removable lid, and even some bangle bracelets from the small pieces left over. Also check out my other YouTube videos on the Dizzy Bowl projects that I have completed to date. Many of these projects will be on display at the 2019 AAW meeting in Raleigh, North Carolina.